Let's hear what Peter Thiel had to say first before we look at other Bitcoin obituaries. Um, so I uh, hear Peter Thiel believes Bitcoin has been co-opted by BlackRock and Larry Fink, which that part right there is not too far off necessarily. Um, but I wouldn't say co-opted 100%. I'd be saying maybe like 5%. Uh, but let's listen to what the argument is here. Um, but then, there, you know, probably the, the, the part where I'm um, less less convinced of is this, this question of um, the sort of ideological founding vision of Bitcoin or these cryptocurrencies as sort of a, you know, um, cypherpunk, crypto anarchist, libertarian, anti-centralized government thing. You know, this is always, you know, the Isn't line. Isn't that what got you interested that's, in that's, the first that's, that's place? What I, that's, that's what I, that's what I. Uh, so you're going to kind of hear this argument. I'm just going to kind of mention a few things here and there. You're going to kind of hear this argument where, well, wasn't Bitcoin created to go against, you know, the banks? Wasn't Bitcoin created to go against the governments? Wasn't Bitcoin created to be, you know, independent, all this stuff? And it's like, yes, partially, right? But that also is a growing phase. If you're going to get mass adoption, right, governments are going to adopt it. You know, um, you're going to get people, you know, who are the establishment getting into it, right? So crypto is not just anti-establishment. I think it attracts a lot of those types of people or a lot of, I would say, you know, anywhere from people who are more like anarchists all the way over to people who are just, um, you know, kind of centrists, you know, live and let live type of thing versus, you know, people who say crypto is the devil, um, but they're not in it, right? But so they're just trying to basically form it as Bitcoin's changed, right? It's like, no, it's just basically uh, shape-shifting into what is necessary for mass adoption. If you hear what, you know, Roger Ver had to say back in the day, great visions of, you know, what Bitcoin could be in the future. But a lot of people didn't take into account that, yes, uh, the corporations will want to get in too. And they talked about it all the time, but they didn't really think about it necessarily in their future vision. So um, Bitcoin kind of growing out of that, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just that phase of being totally anti-establishment. Now you're going to have the smaller countries in the world, right? It's the same thing that's going to happen at the country level as it's going to happen at the retail level. So at the retail level, right, banks usually get into an asset first and then uh, the retail follows. Um, but here with Bitcoin, uh, retail got them first and then the institutions follow. It's the same thing with governments. El Salvador gets in, the WEF, WEF says, don't do that. Don't buy Bitcoin. Don't try to mine Bitcoin. It's bad for your economy. And then they go harder in it, right? And they, they're they going to do very well with that. They've been doing very well with that. And then other larger, na semi, uh, similar nations follow, and then the larger nations follow. So um, I just think that idea that Bitcoin's static and it's always supposed to be anti-world, you know, just doesn't make too much sense. But, you know, I, I'd say it's kind of a weak argument, but it's an easy one to, as a sound clip just to say, and people are like, oh, yeah, yeah Bitcoin's changed. And that what got you interested that's, in the that's, first that's place? What I, that's, that's what I... That's what I. Uh, that's what I thought was terrific about it, and the, and then you know the question is, does it really work that way, or you know has that thread somehow gotten lost? And so when people in the FBI tell me that they'd much rather have criminals use Bitcoin than hundred dollar bills, um, it suggests that maybe you know maybe it's not quite not quite working the way it was supposed to. Have you sold it? That is absolutely. If you even know anything about the white paper, that's absolutely incorrect, right? Bitcoin has been pseudo anonymous, but is never supposed to have been completely anonymous. You have a blockchain that records every transaction. You sleuth it around and you piece it together. Of course, you're going to be able to track every single transaction, right? So when Elizabeth Warren says crypto is for shadowy super quarters who want to evade everything, it's actually completely false because everything's on the blockchain. We've already always said that. So I think this is just kind of a disingenuous argument. And the question is, you know, why is he going anti-Bitcoin here? My theory would be that essentially Peter um, has, I mean, he's a huge venture capitalist. He's made tons of money, you know, obviously same level as Elon Musk in terms of that um, with, you know, co-creating PayPal and everything. And so he's too smart for this argument, but he's smart enough to make the argument to get people off the Senate because he's probably buying more, to be honest. He's like, I, at the end, well, I'll let you, fi we'll finish this and we'll see what he says at the end. But um, everybody always wants more, right? So manipulating the market by saying, oh yeah, I don't really like that thing anymore. And then he goes home and buys a shit ton on Coinbase probably. <laughs> the way it was supposed to, have you sold any of your Bitcoin? Uh, I, I still hold some. I, yeah, I've, I've you know, there, there are all these ways I. So evade the question more, Peter. Have you sold some Bitcoin? 
Well, I still hold some. I didn't say I sold. I, I, I didn't buy as much as I should have. Um, There's the one, right? I didn't, didn't buy as much as I should have. So hopefully uh, people sell this dip and I can buy it on this one and, you know, and get more. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm probably, I, 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 I'm not, I, I'm I'm not sure it's going to go up that dramatically from here. So he's not saying anything that people can clip him on in the future and say he was totally incorrect, right? And he's stuttering there because he knows that all Bitcoin maxis in this market are going to be listening to that and timestamping that and putting that in the bookmarks on Twitter and waiting for uh, like the next couple of years to basically dance on this obituary grave. But he's you know calling Bitcoin dead, but in a way that he's hedging his bets here. Here, yeah, I, th I think we got the we, we got the ETF edition, and I don't know who else who else buys it quickly from here. Some interesting, except for me and my friends <laughs> and Michael Dell. The investment advice uh, that 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 actually surprised me because I I don't think I've heard you. Uh, I thought you were still all in. It, it um, I, I still have a small position. It it probably still can go up some, but it's going to be a volatile, bumpy ride, and. Uh, well, tell me something I don't know, Peter. <laughs> and uh, I, I am I'm I, I was I had a dual dual reason. One was this sort of you know ideological decentralized future of computing world that I I really do believe in, really believe would be would be better. And it, it seemed like the perfect vehicle for that for for such a long time. And I'm I am just much less convinced of that. And so I interesting. So maybe maybe so maybe 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 Larry Fink with the um, BlackRock ETF surrendered to the forces the anti-esg forces or maybe um um uh it's it's more like bitcoin's been co-opted by by them and I, I i worry it was more the latter okay different question uh space sex that's in the so you know it being like hey it's been co-opted by larry fink and everything it's like yeah they're they want to be in on this market they want some level of control because they control money throughout the world so what are they going to do? They're going to buy, you know, 5% of these Bitcoin mining companies. They're going to buy as much Bitcoin as they can off the open market, right? It's a free market. Um, doesn't mean they can 51% attack Bitcoin. Go and watch any Andreas Antonopoulos video about how they can actually co-opt Bitcoin. And you'll soon realize the largest banks in the world, the people with the most money, the largest nations, largest companies, everybody, they would have to spend so much capital to 51% attack Bitcoin that they're never going to get near enough influence in the uh, in the space in terms of through coin ownership or mining in order to actually destroy bitcoin as a decentralized network just not possible like unless these guys basically wanted to uh like commit seppuku right because essentially what they would do um is they would you know uh have to continually spend money over and over again just to try to take over uh basically the the bitcoin hash power and it would be a losing battle. They might take over it for a short period of time, and then it just costs too much. So um, it's kind of like you know somebody going down with a ship and then just trying to grab the other person, and pull them down with them, right? That's like what they'd have to do. And I don't think Larry Fink and BlackRock have a suicide mission. So um, just seems like a very illogical argument to me, and and goes on assumptions that a lot of people who aren't educated about this stuff would probably buy into and be like, oh yeah, Peter Thiel is a really smart guy. He'd probably you know uh, tell me the truth here, you know. Um, and you know, I'm not saying anything bad about Peter. I, I really like the guy and I think he's done uh, amazing work, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur and everything throughout his life. So very, you know, uh, interesting person to look at and see, you know, what they've done successful, but you just have to understand like just as governments, you know, billionaires don't always tell the truth. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, if you want to look at another clip here, it's just, I won't play the clip because it's the same thing, but I like Max Kaiser. Uh, he's just one of the most outspoken Bitcoin maxis. You know, I forgive him for being a maxi, but um, great guy, uh, funny, hilarious guy as well. But he says, um, narcissism plus autism equals I should have bought more. That's why I've sold some. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a very logical argument. He's uh, totally telling the truth here, right? So uh, easy, easy to see uh, the counter there.